The shocking story about how the Wall Street banks have left the silver market in place for the short squeeze of a lifetime. That's the tagline of the book, The Big Silver Short, written by my guest on this episode of Goldcore TV, Chris Marcus. Chris is also an ex-professional bond and option trader and the host of the popular YouTube channel, Arcadia Economics. And remember, as always, if you want to see more interviews with industry experts and thought leaders in financial markets, subscribe to Goldcore TV and hit the notification bell now. And if you want to learn more about how you can buy, sell, and store gold and silver, log on to goldcore.com, your precious metals experts. Chris Marcus, welcome to Goldcore TV. Dave, thanks so much for having me here. It's a pleasure to talk with you and certainly interesting times in the gold and silver market. Indeed, and this is slightly different from for you as you're normally the one asking the questions. Um, but now you actually get a, a chance to 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 talk about what it is that you want to talk about. First thing um, is you're the author of the Silver Short, the Big Silver Short. Um, on the front of the book, it says the shocking story about how the Wall Street banks have left the silver market in a place for a short squeeze of a lifetime. Can you explain that a bit more? Yeah, well, certainly I can explain it. Um, although even if someone didn't hear me explain it or didn't read the book, I guess I'm more certain now than even when I wrote it or published it or even when I started getting into gold and silver in 2009, I think they're going to live through it in our very near future. Uh, certainly it's not the easiest thing to time, but as the book lays out and it did it a specific way. It wasn't just me. It was actually interview style format because mm. rather than just what I know, hey, here are these guys who've been following silver since before I was born. You know, some of the people interviewed in there were actually there when silver went to, you know, 50 bucks in 1980. And I find it's one of those things that when you actually, it's kind of like shocking and unbelievable when you first hear it. If you're able to take an objective perspective which isn't always the easiest thing to do in today's conditioned Wall Street culture, just today's culture in general. But I found that, I guess the only thing different between when I started investigating this 10 years ago in 2011 and now, I, I, my, I kept thinking, I mean, maybe I'm missing something or I've, I've made an error in my calculations or mistranslated something. Um, but not only is it, it seems like it's playing out exactly like I would have expected, exactly I think you would have expected, how I think most of your listeners, part of them is expecting. Indeed, yeah. But it's like, it's great if, uh, you know, you're you know you're studying to be a doctor, like one day I'm going to be a doctor. Although while you're sitting there, you know, up at two in the morning, studying stuff, your eyes hurt, you know, you have all, you're tired that day. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to lose track of the end site, yet that's why I think it's a great time to just, not believe something because I say it or you say it, but look back at what happened with the London gold pool. We just had the 50 year anniversary of the Nixon shock. And let's remember, maybe it's a good time to think about what led us to that. What's happened since then? Have they, I listened to that Nixon speech again the other day. Mm. It was telling us how this was gonna keep prices stable, it was gonna be great for the American worker. Gonna protect the dollar. When you think about all the money that goes into the, the military, the Pentagon, which Dr. Mark Skidmore is now up to $145 trillion just wow. of missing money that he's found, which makes you wonder how much he hasn't found. How does all this money get to be printed? You can't do that without suppressing gold and silver, because as you well know, throughout history, that's the canary in the coal mine. When silver mm -hmm. and gold start going a lot higher and people... You know, even people who don't get it are thinking, wait, what, what, what's going on there? Why is, you saw that, the, the world actually got a, a teaser of that. That was the practice round in February. So we went over 30 bucks <laughs> for a couple hours. Mm. And all of a sudden you have, uh, you have JM Bullion on CNBC, Wall Street Journal. I didn't even know these guys could spell silver. They had an article about silver manipulation. <laughs> and that's with just a couple hours over $30. What happens when it stays over 30? What happens when it approaches its 2011 high, let alone its 1980 high? We have silver half of its 1980 high, 
in a world where Bitcoin is up, what, what 400x just since 2013? And here's another thing we always look at, or not always, but many people primarily just say, well, the high was $50 in 1980. Yet, especially if you read Silver Bulls by Paul Sarnoff, who was there and in the middle of the action, kind of like we get to experience some of us 2011 and certainly what's happening now. When he actually detailed what the CFTC did back then, what the COMEX did back then, what the Fed did back then, what Paul Volcker did back then, parts that don't get mentioned in our Rothschild's textbooks, it quickly became clear to me silver was going to go a lot higher than $50 in 1980 as well. And one example, you know how they often raise the margin requirements, right? Yes. So you know what Paul Sarnoff, he said it wasn't, you know, before things got wacky, it was $1,000 per contract. And you know what he says they raised it up to at at one at its peak? What was the peak they, they got the margin requirement up to? So if it started at 1,000, what's what's the highest you can imagine them jacking it up to? I don't know, 2,000, 3,000? About 75,000. Whoa. They were raising it. Think about it like this. Let's say I know you have X dollars in account. So if I raise margin so that you'd have to do a margin call of X plus Y, but you don't have Y, you know, you're going to get stopped out. Then they said, okay, you can only sell. Does that sound familiar? Is that maybe the same <laughs> playbook you saw with Robin Hood? Yeah. How was, how was Robin Hood justified in telling people they were only allowed to buy one share of First Majestic Silver? I thought silver is just this thing for the, the Fruit Loops and Alien Hunters, yet for national security, they're re <laughs> why? And how silly is that? One share? Oh, you can have one. Why don't you just say zero? But one <laughs> share. <laughs> so only tra it's tra it was trading at what, $15, $20, or something like that? I think that was another thing that I'm looking forward to in the future digging into because I think the short position on the First Majestic Silver was also a big part of what was happening on February 1st. It's just like people were getting blown out that were short silver. Somebody's short First Majestic Silver. I mean, I've been tracking the short position. Interestingly, we did a, a call about that about a week before. And then when silver got first majestic was up at 24, 25 bucks, if that had closed there or stayed there a couple of days, that's when, especially when someone has a large short position that's known, you had, you had what I think in due history will be looked as the final warning shot back in February. And what do they do? The same thing they did in 2008 with housing. Same thing they did in 2011. But they stuff it under the rug and just hope it blows up on the next guy's watch. Well, eventually, you know, we can debate the timing, but if there's some other ultimate ending to this, I can't figure it out. If you can, or your listeners can, let me know. To me, it seems we're incredibly, we're like minutes in front of that point. One of the things that's driven us to uh, this is the massive amount of money printing that we're seeing in the States in particular. It's going on all over the world, but in the States in particular, that doesn't look like it's in any way going to slow down. It's you know it, this is it's going to continue. There's more stimulus packages coming. Um, does this suppression uh, continue for now, or what is the cam the straw that'll break the camel's back? I think I think those straws have already broken. We're just kind of the news is filtering out now. So again, as we've seen repeatedly through American history, through the history of the television, which I might add was specifically designed to put your brain in an alpha state to make it more receptive to hypnotic suggestion. So it appears as if something happened. I think what I've found helpful is when I, you know, it's, there's this tendency, we wanna know the details, how this fit, how did this, but it's like a trial, you know, by the end of the trial, by the time you have all the witnesses, you learn more. By the time the poker hand is played out and all of the cards are turned over, yeah, then when you have full information, we don't have that yet. Even if we had it, it's like, who do you believe? I mean, I look at CNN right now and I think generally they're usually like, I imagine CNN, CNBC, you know, I've studied code breaking and a bunch of, uh, you know, how to decipher uh, subliminals that are used on us. Now I look at these things and I usually kind of assume like whatever it's, and, you know, working on Wall Street, anything, you get the hang of it after a while, especially when I write my own headlines, when I make my own videos, it's kind of like you reverse engineer these things. 
Bart Shilton, former CFTC commissioner. I asked him, I said, you know, I don't get to see your data, but as I've pieced together the clues, the way I've come to understand it is that, you know, you have, let's say silver is trading $25 and five cents. Mm. A lot of people put their stop orders right at the $25 level. Who do they put their stop orders with? The banks. So the banks who in JP Morgan confessed to repeatedly screwing their customers on hundreds of thousands of occasions. So this isn't conspiracy theory. This is legal documented record. Mm. So the banks know where the stops are. I asked Bart Chilton, you know, the way I've come to understand is they nudge it a little, then you trick in the stop, uh, trip the stops, high frequency algorithms, it drops lower, the same banks buy it back cheaper, which is confirmed on the COT reports if you, if you look through it. It's like if, if you know how to tune into the right frequency, it's it's obvious. It's like if you could had a radio frequency that tells you what they're saying in the backroom meetings that is different than what they say out in public, you know, it makes it a lot easier. And that's what I've focused my time on doing. So it's a lot of this stuff, it's there. And that's what I, I attempt to point out to people so that they can see it, so that you can see the evidence. You don't have to... I don't want people to do something because it's what I do. Hey, I'm not perfect. I'm genuinely giving with honest intention my best research, but at least this way, you know, I share it and other people. And that's what's great about the silver and gold community. There's everyone is researching together. And that's why I think this Ponzi scheme's unraveling in front of us now. And talking about uh, triggering, triggering stops there, we had the flash crash there. Uh, it's nearly two weeks ago at this stage. Um, you got a good feeling, obviously, as to what caused that. Now, obviously, we had a we had a sell off on the Friday after uh, U.S. numbers, um, and that selling then kind of continued on the open again on Sunday night in what would have been extremely illiquid market. And you know, as a trader, uh, I'm, I'm an ex trader myself, so you know you don't you don't trade a very very large order at the most illiquid time in a market, unless either you're being stopped out, you have a massive margin call and you have absolutely no choice, or there are other motivations. What's your thinking around what happened in the flash crash? I think that's at, at the exact heart of it. It's exactly what you think it is. In fact, the, what clued me into that, and I'm guessing you remember this, uh, is back in September of 2011, it was Labor Day weekend. <laughs> I remember this clearly. This was because uh, I had a large option bet on at the time. And gold, you know, was going well because gold had just crossed 1900. And I believe it was, uh, it was either the Sunday or the Monday night. It was the holiday weekend. And at 2 a.m. in the morning, the euro was already being printed. And you have the Swiss. You know, I remember getting the Wall Street mm -hmm. Journal alert. Swiss peg the franc to the euro. And to break that down, as for the Swiss, you know, the franc is, you know, I mean, they say the dollar is the safe haven, but once the dollar starts getting exposed as the fraud, it's interesting how quickly that safe haven title is transferred, which means maybe it's not as safe as we thought to begin with. But, you know, I would say maybe gold or silver was the safe haven or should be in today's fraudulent environment has not acted as such, but... So if you're saying, if the headline says the Swiss are pegging to the euro and the euro is printing like a bunch of Bernankes, you're all printing like a bunch of Bernankes. And if the, the, the franc is going to be pegged to the euro, that means they're going to start printing it to make sure it's garbage too, which I'm, so as soon as I see this headline, I'm thinking, oh my God, is gold about to, gold is around like 1906 or Maybe I think it got up to 1921 on at least some chart I've looked at before. I'm thinking, oh my God, if the Swiss, what Wall Street is calling the last safe haven currency, if they're going to start printing right now, I thought gold was going to break $2,000 on that news. Mm. Instead, we see a drop. It was like 50 bucks, or the next day was down $80. And exactly what you said about how you don't execute a trade like that. In fact, I was an options trader. And I would have been, they wouldn't have just fired me. They probably would have beat me up, throwing me out of the, the, the place if I did that. We were trained specifically not to do that. <laughs> so I can say firsthand, 
as someone with trading experience. This was not an accident. Here's the best part. Oh, and I think you might like to know, I'm actually, uh, I've started recording these. I get permission. I say, hey, I'm recording this for quality control purposes. Is that okay with you? They've said yes. So I'm about ready to start publishing because I think people would be shocked when they hear all these financial experts. I mean, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, BlackRock, these are the, when I was at Wharton, this was the biggest crowds when these guys mm. came down. Yet none of them can explain how silver fell 10% on February 2nd, despite Every piece of data I can find confirming that was the single greatest day of silver demand in the history of planet Earth. Wow, yeah. But when you ask them, like, well, how did this happen? And, how can, and, and when I called August 5th saying, no one I know believes it's possible that silver could fall $3 or 10% on the day that iShares claims to add 61 million ounces of silver, which blew, which tripled the record, if you take away the Friday before that, when it was 30 mm. million, before that it had only been 20 million. They, uh, didn't, they didn't mention the prospectus changes either when I called. So sometimes people are just lying, cheating, and stealing. And it's as shocking as it may be, it is what it is. And, you know, but thanks to folks like you who, you know, do honest research, uh, the, the Ponzi scheme is being found out quickly. And it's in the bottom of the ninth, in my opinion. Now, you, you 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 called gold and silver the, the canary in the coal mine earlier. It's a, a, a name that's often given to it. Um, and I suppose we can look over the last number of years and we've seen record prices in stocks. We're seeing property markets increase. We're seeing bond markets um, at highs. Um, we're seeing inflation across the board. We're seeing inflation, retail inflation. We're seeing uh, commodity inflation. We're seeing it everywhere. Um, as you said, like gold and silver, silver is, 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 you know, half its all time high, uh, gold at, uh, you know, back down that the 1700s haven't been over, haven't been over 2000. Um, it's the one thing where everybody kind of celebrates. Everybody's happy when their stocks are going through the roof. They're not worried. Everybody's delighted if they're a property owner, when the value of their property rises, um, it doesn't, uh, it, it, it can hide uh, or the true nature of what's going on, which is inflation everywhere. There are some there's some inflation that we like. We like the inflation in stocks. We like the inflation in property. If we're a property owner, if you're not on the property ladder, that's a different story. Um, gold and silver investors would like to see inflation in gold and silver, but it is the one thing, as you say, historically, which acts as that canary in the coal mine. Uh, so there can be a motivation to maintain. Um, or to not let it spike in the way that stocks and properties and so on have done. But that said, if we look at gold anyway, it's 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 averaged about nine and a half percent over the last twenty years. Um, so it is moving up slowly. Um, and if there wasn't that suppression, we would probably see um, that alleged suppression. We would pro we would probably see a much rap more rapid rate of inflation in the gold price. But that said, and if we look at silver as well, there seems to be something different about the silver market over the last year. Um, there are a few forms, and I suppose the, the Reddit Wall Street Silver Forum is one in particular, um, where there seems to be uh, a much better appreciation um, around silver, and particularly around physical silver. Do you see that momentum continuing to change? Do you think people are actually being turned on to 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 silver to silver more regularly now, and actually understanding the idea of real money and the real money that silver and gold is? Do you see this as a bit of a movement that's gaining more and more momentum? I'll say the short answer is yes. Although it's a long a long question with a short answer. <laughs> well, I'll go a step farther. I don't see any way that it can get reversed. And I've been saying that since February 2nd, and maybe some of these things happen in slow motion or over a thousand year time span. I guess uh, maybe it's just a blip on the, on the, the, the timeline. But I felt like what happened at February 1st, February 2nd was they went all, the banks went all in on a bluff, hoping they could break the will and get people to fold, but the world called them. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're just, you know, it's like, imagine you, you, you have the nut flush, best hand possible. You know, you can't be beat. You're just waiting for the cards to be turned over. Let's think about what happened since then. We had Jeff Curry run his circuits. We had Ed Moy, a former U.S. Mint director, say that he doesn't think they have the silver to back it up. LBMA, where J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs are members, after all that, oh, there's uh, just conspiracy theory. Then they said we were weeks away from running out of silver. I never commented on that. I mean, a lot of people have commented on how <laughs> I think that tells us all we need to know. So, you know, this stuff is happening. And again, I've been thinking a lot about the way information spreads, the way we learn things. It takes time and it can be different for each person. But, you know, now we see protests not about, hey, you need to wear the, the, the mask, but we see people burning masks, burning passports, accusing their governments of lying while governments are you know, in doing things that are hard to explain. And that's the nature of a Ponzi scheme, like we saw with Bernie Madoff. It went on for 50 years or however long it did. But the day he turned himself in, all of a sudden the clock, the timing changes. Second you hear that, you're running like, holy crap. You're not saying like, oh, what should I get for breakfast today? You're you're going straight to get your money out as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. When you push the beach ball underwater far enough, I mean, you have a coiled spring. And so, I don't know, I guess maybe the mind is somewhat naturally wants to form its own timelines. But I was sitting around there thinking yesterday, I'm like, or last week rather, as I was putting these things together and I'm thinking, gee, you know, if... If there's really what some people think has been going on with COVID, and that's becoming common knowledge, which someone forecast a couple months ago, that was one marker. And, and if this turns out to be true, and then you see things start to happen. You know, in either case, I my extrapolation of all of it, any cash I had, I was buying anything I could get. I didn't have time to think about whether it's a $2 premium or $5 premium. It was just, I was having my assistant, people on my team would say, hey, these guys owe us money. Go get it collected. Just get anything, whether it's eagles or rounds, just mm -hmm. get it. That was how I was feeling. And then, you know, as I keep thinking and get confirmation of what I'm seeing and then talk to other people, I was trying to tell that to uh, Andy Schechtman and Miles Franklin, who's, who's a dealer. I couldn't get him on the phone for two days. And when he finally gets on the phone, he's telling me I was up to four o'clock at night. Most people don't see these things. And even, I mean, it even takes me a while because I don't just run my mouth when I hear something, but I think about it. I verify it. I talk to other people. I'm like, can I be missing something here? So it took three or four days before I know what words to put it into. Because I look at the people in, in my audience as, as family. I mean, my mom watches it. That was always my goal to, I mean, I have other things I can do in life now, which is, I'm actually really excited to do, so I don't need to do this, which is a nice position to be in, but it feels like the right thing because I see a crime happening. And so, you know, a couple of days go by, then uh, have Andy on the show. I had a couple other people on the show. I'm saying, is, is there something I'm missing? Or is what I tell you a couple of days is now starting to happen. Then people hear it. Then new information comes in. And I haven't seen anything to tell me I've been wrong along there. So now I have more detail to add here. Now I'm sure there's some people are hearing this and being like, wait, this sounds kind of extreme. Is this, this guy's really saying, could it be correct? But here's, here's another good piece of news. I'm not asking you to believe anything I say, but go look for yourself, form your own conclusions. See if you can verify these data points. So far, I, I haven't seen anyone explain an alternate outcome I don't think, I mean, how many people knew that the silver, like 10 years ago when I started, nobody thought the silver, you know, you say silver is manipulated. Okay, you're, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, there's a lot of people who now, believe me, I mean, there's whatever number of subscribers we have. So on some level, you know, something they agreed with. So that's how it, that's how it goes. Like when the trial starts, maybe you don't know, but then you pull out all the witnesses that nobody knows about. You show the camera tape. Once Rost and Benham of the CFTC helped to be an accomplice of one of the greatest, of the greatest financial crime in history, which he confirmed on the record later on in that thing, he talks about how they, the, the mechanisms that were used, margin requirements, all the things that people have talked about and 
alleged, he confirmed, just like Bart Chilton confirmed it. Rustin Benham confirmed his words, controlled the silver price and volatility. So put this on there, wrote him a letter saying, I don't understand this. It's 20 years in the markets, been to Wharton, worked for, personally, in my opinion, uh, one of the best trading shops in the world. I'd bet on them over anyone else. I'll put it like that. These guys started their shop because they used to go to the racetrack and win. And I've never heard a comment like that. And I can't explain it outside of price fixing, but I asked him. And I also copied all the executives, the different people in the silver industry that come on my show, like the companies that have had billions of dollars stolen from them, the investors, people who have been cheated, so that they could see it too. Because if he's saying the price was tamped down that day, are there other days when the price gets tamped down? Do the banks know when the price gets tamped down? One question we might wrap up with, actually, then is answer me this. If the silver market is continuing to be manipulated, why should people invest in it? Why do you believe that it's still a good investment to have now? Well, I've learned my lesson on the S word. So I wouldn't, for, uh, on a good day at least, hopefully I'm smart enough not to ever tell anybody else what I think that they should do. And that's why I'm glad I'm not a financial planner. I share my research. Why do have I taken, except for, uh, <laughs> except for I spent about a thousand bucks on this one crypto. Uh, it was like five or six years ago. And that, I don't know, it's like, it's gone up quite a bit, which mm. was fortunate. But aside from that, I mean, I, I would say it'd be close to 100% of what I own is in silver or silver related assets, which by all means, that is not appropriate. That's not even close to being appropriate for most people. Mm. So I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying as an expression of my own feeling, not what I'm telling anyone else to do, but someone who was a trained as a trader, you know, I have experience of you know, in certain situations, it is appropriate to be aggressive, which which is most people that's not, you shouldn't have anywhere near that much. But the reason I do that is I've set up my life in a certain way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 43 next month, okay? Mm. So I look at all this stuff that I've laid out just, you know, a quick summary today. I mean, there's obviously, I think you can see, I could talk plenty more <laughs> about this. And it's like, what are my choices? Should I buy treasuries right now that are negative yielding on the biggest Ponzi scheme on the stock markets in a bubble? And in 2018, when they even talked about or they got rates up to two and a half percent, the thing was cratering. Yeah, and here's silver, half of its 1980 high. Now I get it. We're in a world where Wall Street gets, uh, they give out meth. It's called trading on momentum. Hey, buy after the price is going up so we can jack it down. If it's going down, sell. That's the exact thing they've used to fleece these tech chart readers in the silver market for the last 40, 50 years. So I get it. You know, that's the way we're trained. I was fortunate, the shop that I worked for, they trained us specifically to strip out these biases. An example being, I get it. People feel like the manipulation is never going to end. It's going to go on forever because it's been going on for a long time. Hey, maybe it'll take Sometime longer than I can imagine, but it's not going to go on forever. The London gold pool collapsed. Every paper currency in history has collapsed. I think this one's collapsing right now, but let's say I'm not right about that. Let's say, you know, I'm fortunate, you know, a year ago, oh, I was going into debt to start a business. So things look pretty bleak now. Now things are, are going well, I have extra money coming in beyond what I spend to live and eat food. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe what if 20 years I'm sitting here, silver is $10, but I have a lot of silver because I just keep buying it cheap. And then it's, then there's the reset. Or I don't know, maybe it'll take 40 years somehow in some galactic scenario I can't imagine. But what I, if I have children or if I leave it behind to someone, well, what do I want to leave them? Some, some George Bush, US government credit or silver? So again, I'm not, I don't think it's, I think we're going to see, I think the at least the beginning of this will be obvious to people before the end of the year. I cannot guarantee that. That's that's my own internal belief. I also keep seeing a lot of things popping up, certain dates to see like capital required, stuff that sounds like Basel III around that September 30th, October 1st, beginning of the fourth quarter, which is also the beginning of the U.S. fiscal calendar. That is my best guess. I cannot guarantee that. If I did, I would say it, but I want to be clear 
because that's my only intention to try and put things in a proper context and perspective yet i mean it's like to me it's the same feeling i think people had about housing before 2007 you know if you're saying it was a bubble in 2005 you weren't wrong it just hadn't happened yet mm. some people who knew where to look with enron it was clear if you were investigating it bernie madoff was clear to harry markopolis and a bunch of others all these things are clear you saw in the big short they said how do these guys find it well they looked and that's what i've done and that's uh I, I guess the, the wrapping up that answer, if you can give yourself the patience of the timeline, or even think about this, if you wanna make a fortune, find what everybody's doing, do the opposite. If everybody has a five second attention span and can't think longer than that, and you can think a couple steps down the road, start doing that for a couple of days or a couple of months, you'll have more money trading in these markets than you need. And that's, at least that is, my perspective on silver and why I do what I do and at least share what I do, not so people can copy that, but at least have the full information. Everyone's situation is different. Mm. But if you're able to understand that, that's at least why I do what I do. Excellent answer. <laughs> um, before we wrap up here, how can our audience find out more about what it is that you do? Um, Arcadia Economics uh, is the YouTube channel, correct? Arcadia Economics on YouTube, ArcadiaEconomics.com. And I'm actually down in Mexico today. Uh, I'm at a resort today. I've been doing, you know, a sacrifice, testing out the different resorts for Silverfest, which is coming up October 26th to 31st. There's going to be a big Halloween party. A lot of the people I have on my show. Hopefully, maybe we'll even get to see you there. Uh, I like that. I guess it's kind of weird the way life goes. And then I'm realizing one day I wake up, I'm like, I kind of have a really big budget to throw. And I act how I've templated it is thinking about, you know, the same way people pay five or 10,000 bucks to go hit ground balls with the 1961 Yankees. Yeah. You know, it's something they care about getting to meet these people. They're going to be there. A lot of people with great energy who are interested in letting go of the frustration and just thinking, all right, whatever day it happens. When you think about what kind of numbers you would have to have to actually balance something out, whether the government gets to choose it or not, that's what I feel blessed to be able to be part of is start now saying, all right, let's let these guys do whatever they want, but let's let's begin creating our way of life, focus on that. And that's uh, gonna be the theme of this year's Silver Fest and hopefully we'll see you there. Awesome. Chris Marcus, the book, the Big Silver Short, it's available on your website, I believe, arcadiaeconomics.com. Chris, thanks for joining us on Goldcore TV today. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate what you're doing. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Indeed. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely enjoy these interviews with some of the leading voices in financial markets and trading. And remember, as always, if you want to see more interviews with industry experts and thought leaders in financial markets, subscribe to Goldcore TV hit your notification bell now and if you want to learn more about how you can buy sell and store gold and silver log on to goldcore.com your precious metals experts